Hey, what's up, people? So, um, I just wanted to uh, clear the air here and tell you why I twitch so much, um, and why I'm probably going to be twitching even more, um, and, um, why I believe, um, uh, that I have developed the conditions that caused this to happen. Uh, things I've touched on briefly, but, um, I'm gonna try to go a little bit more in depth here. Um, so, yeah, essentially, um, even before I was on the benzo taper, um, you know, uh, uh, before I was addicted to benzos, um, which I'm prescribed, by the way, same with methadone, which also gives me withdrawal symptoms because I'm on a very low dose. You know, I don't want to be on it in the first place. I don't need it. I haven't had an inkling to do opiates in, a, in fucking who knows how many years. I'm not an AA person that counts the fucking days or whatever it is they do. Um, but uh, I twitch because I have uh, central nervous system sensitivity. So essentially my central nervous system um, uh, is... Well, I mean, it's in a weakened state. Uh, and this because of the, uh, the correlation between the immune system and the central nervous system uh, gives me a compromised immune system, uh, which uh, should tell you how bad it is. Um, I am diagnosed with at least, at least five. I stopped counting after five. I think it's something like seven neurologic nerve pain conditions, um, uh, uh, like, I, I, I even just developed sciatica, too, like, in the last six months, which is one of the most painful, um, nerves that can be affected, it's in your left leg, it's really, uh, yeah, really not very nice, and because, uh, it's neurologic, which means that's my brain misinterpreting signals, um, there's nothing I can really do about it, um, uh, I'm certainly not getting any real treatment from doctors. Um, doctors just, uh, they just see my, my history of, you know, trying to treat these things when they first were arising when I was a teenager, um, by doing street drugs, um, to escape that and also my situation as a homeless young man on the streets. Um, uh, they, they just see that and, you know, they go, oh, this is a big liability case. I don't want to do anything to interfere with this individual. Just let him continue to suffer. Now, um, I'm also, uh, of the mind that, and, you know, I really wish that there's no validity to this, but that I could have something like MS, um, because I have been diagnosed with Huntington's before. It was a false diagnosis, though, as a result of... And this, uh, uh, this leads to why I believe I have developed these uh, issues. Um, I uh, was forced very, very heavy-duty antidepressants for my treatment-resistant major depression disorder. Um, and uh, they gave me very intense seizures for uh, about a year straight. And uh, it was uh, just terrible. It was terrifying. Um, oh, yeah, I, uh, I, I tried to commit suicide. And I, I successfully killed myself for 20 minutes because I didn't want to live like that. They told me I would be in diapers within a year. I mean, it wasn't true because years had passed, but... Um, like, the reason I'm on a benzo taper now was because I started taking uh, atizolam and Xanax, uh, which, you know, may not be traditional painkillers, but they do actually, especially because it's all <coughs> coming from my nerves, they cause uh, relaxation through the body, and they um, allow for a GABA to be um, transmitted through the brain to a degree until you take it to the point where you're just, your GABA receptors are no longer uh, functioning as they should. And um, this is all because I, I wasn't getting proper treatment and my condition was getting worse and worse. Um, and I was telling my doctor, please, please, please do something, please. 
And I also, you know, have made them, which now I see as a mistake, of uh, being honest with my doctor and telling them everything I took. And I don't think I was fully hooked on benzos when I was using them myself about six months ago. Um, but they put me on a very high dose of Valium. And uh, the taper, which, you know, they've, uh, they've reduced again. You know, the pharmacist says that it's aggressive, um, this taper they're doing. Those are her words, not mine. Um, uh, uh, it's, it's making it way worse. Um, but even still, if I wasn't on them, I would be twitching a little bit because um, what affects stuff like fibromyalgia, which you know, I've stated this before, I'll, I'll state, state it again. Fibromyalgia is a doctor's way of saying, we have no idea what's going on, but it has to do with your nerves, um, which is one of the many diagnoses I have. And, uh, um, fibromyalgia can get very serious. I mean, I've seen people who on cold days, they've had to, uh, essentially, uh, confine themselves to a wheelchair and have someone push them around. Like I'm starting to consider, you know, getting a cane because of my sciatica. Um, but, uh, yeah, fibromyalgia, um, like when I was getting decent care, which I spent a lot of money on, um, at this private, uh, pain clinic, the guy who was doing physio and, uh, kinesiology at first for me was, uh, uh, you know, he was a very smart guy and, uh, he left to do his, uh, his thesis at Cambridge in, uh, England on, uh, how, uh, it was atmospheric pressure changes that, make uh people with fibromyalgia and other types of very enigmatic nerve pain um so uh, uh so prone to becoming extreme when there are stuff like seasonal changes and um i live in an area where like like personally i think it's um it's I, it's cold, it's wet, so humidity, rain, rain is typically the worst um, offender that makes this condition. And it's symptoms a lot more um, exagger uh, like agitated and um, like I, I become, and I'm not using this term in a derogatory way because I'm, not, I'm the one experiencing it, but it makes me spastic and um you know it's just getting worse and worse and worse it's just snowballing no one's doing anything about it um i'm trying so damn hard i've seen so many specialists um i've gotten you know very few answers except we ruled out that it was neuralgic you know it was my brain not my nerves because i did painful nerve blocks which are injections where they inject you without a sedative sedative or anything um they inject you uh with a very big needle very deep into your nerve which you know as you'd probably imagine hurts quite a bit and what hurts the most though is they inject this gel into you um and it's you know intended to block the nerve so to block the signal that's hurting and uh uh, the, what's, what's really unpleasant about the injection is the gel expands in, in a space that's confined, you know, like it's within you. There's, there's no room for it to grow. So it's just pushing out and out and out. Like it's, it was very unpleasant, but it didn't do anything to stop the signal. So they ruled it as neuralgia. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I'm not not getting any help I can't afford to go to a private clinic again um and uh you know it's it's this kind of thing that leads people to you know self-medicate um but uh yeah no it's uh the twitching is very embarrassing I mean like when I go to school and I talk to people and like I'm sorry I look like a meth head I'm not I fucking like when I was homeless fucking like 12 years ago, you know, I did, I did hot rails and stuff when staying at a house and 
um you know i had a sugar mama for a while and i she did so much math and you know i did it a couple times with her i never liked it i never never enjoyed it it was if it was a drug that was there though as a an addict at the time of hard drugs i would do it i do it like full-on just just shameless you know hot railing which is just one of the grossest ways to do it um like you essentially take a, a glass tube and you heat it up and then you snort a line of it and then you just exhale a bunch of vapor and just ugh, well gross 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 fucking like like junky shit and you know um it just yeah i mean it was never a drug of choice for me when I was a, you know, hardcore addict. Um, and it's definitely a drug I never want to do again. I mean, I'm prescribed dexedrine, and dexedrine sometimes is metabolized into methamphetamine because it's very similar, but, um, I don't know if I'm one of those individuals. I don't, uh, piss, um, hot for methamphetamine when I do urine tests, so... I don't think that's the case, and I'm not prescribed enough, like, dexedrine doesn't do much to me at all, um, except for it kind of calm me down a little bit, because it has an antagonistic effect in people with ADD. I'm on the maximum dosage you can get prescribed, but it doesn't at all contribute to the twitching. Um, it, yeah, as I said, if anything, it, it calms me down, and, uh, and, it's, and it, the twitching subsides a little bit because of uh that uh converse effect uh, that you know the whatever neurochemistry is causing this severe ADD that's so severe you know uh, people thought I had autism for a long time um I was actually diagnosed with autism for like two days until they realized they misdiagnosed me with something again but why do I have these symptoms where did they come from because this is not something I have um, uh, in, in a hereditary context on either side of my family. Uh, the, the depression, um, you know, is hereditary, I believe, because I have it both on my mom's side. My grandmother was very depressed. Um, on my dad's side, my, my, I believe my grandfather on my dad's side had major depressive disorder, and he was a, he was a pretty heavy drinker. He was in the military, uh, you know, he was our Air Force, um, uh, he, uh, you know, was, uh, he taught, you know, squadrons during World War II, and, uh, but he was, you know, very troubled, but, you know, when I knew him, he had his life straightened out, and he was, uh, he was a great guy, you know, he was always joking around, and his name was actually Bud, I'm not even joking, his name was Bud, um, I just, I think that's hilarious, um, I called him Poobah, though, um, but, uh, yeah, uh, no history, though, of nerve disorders on either side. Um, yes, depression is, um, something that can be triggered by stress on the central nervous system. Um, but, uh, that's a far cry from physical, um, manifestations of, uh, CMS issues. Um. I think why I developed them was because, uh, like, uh, like at first when they were starting to manifest, it affected my vision. So I started abusing, um, uh, Oxycontin. Oxycontin was made unabusable, so everyone turned to heroin. I was one of those people, um, unfortunately, I'm talking heroin, heroin, not, not fentanyl, um, fucking hated fentanyl um it just it just even the high wasn't worth it it was just like oh i'm gonna fucking just basically not off to the point of blacking out for like three hours and wake up feeling sick no thanks it was part of why i quit using um also it was just killing everyone it killed me too um and i was resuscitated uh but um yeah, I believe it was because, uh, like, I, I, I hadn't even done enough heroin to the point where I was physically addicted. I was, I could only afford to do it maybe, like, twice a week max, and in low doses, like, 
like, you know, 100 milligrams of heroin, I would, I would at first snort, then I would smoke, then I would inject. And um, I do it once or twice a week, so I wasn't physically dependent. But I went to a detox, um, and they put me on a methadone taper. Um, and then they were like, do you want to be on this for the rest of, or they, well, yeah, they said that, they like, do you want to be on this for the rest of your life? And my mind said at the time, because I realized, oh, hey, this stuff makes me feel really good. Like it felt like a very euphoric opioid when they first gave it to me, which meant I had a very low tolerance, if any, let alone of actual physical addiction. So I thought, oh, screw it. Hey, I'm going to get high for free every day which I did when they first put me on it and I was taking it daily and they put me on a very low dose they put me on two milligrams and then five and then ten um I was getting high from it so uh, in my young my mind I rationalized that hey this is this is sweet um and then I realized you know uh because the doctor said to me, you're an addict now, that I could do as much fucking heroin and cocaine as I wanted to. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I, I more so got into the cocaine when the heroin stopped doing anything. Um, uh, but uh, the, another thing why I continued to do methadone, because once I was physically addicted to it um, and heroin, um, I found that I could I could go a couple days because you could go three days without uh, doing you know a daily witness of methadone because you have to go into the pharmacy and and drink it in front of the pharmacist so they know you're not going out and selling it. Um, like uh, uh, I've gotten to the point where I get carries now, so you know they know that I'm not doing opioids. Um, uh, it's, it takes a long time to even get, like, one carry, which means, you know, you get one to take home. Um, I get a week, which I think is, like, the max I can give you, um, uh, at least uh, with the immense amount of distrust my doctor seems to have in, in me. He, he's not going to give me any more than that. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I could go, this was back when methadone was methadone and not methadose or methadone, like, which is the same thing, both concentrated forms of the drug, which just are not as effective. Everyone who's been on them have told me this, like, uh, they say that it lasts like half as long, it's, you know, it feels like you're getting a different dose every single time, and, you know, it's very much true, but back when it was actual methadone, I could go three days without taking it and just fucking jacking up heroin the entire time. I, I had an ex at the time who I just binge with. Um, she actually, she actually, uh, she was a very troubled person. Um, she was also another ex who was like way too old for me, but um, she looked very young. So, you know, it didn't seem weird to people on the surface, but she was very troubled. She had terrible, terrible depression. Um, she ended up killing herself uh, not long after we broke up. Um, and it was a result of someone who I thought was a friend at the time who actually... Um, uh, after me and her had a fight, they screwed. Um, but uh, I found out that he was like beating the shit out of her and they had a fucking very toxic relationship. So I think he is largely responsible for why she did that. Um, but um, yeah, like, like we would binge way out where she lived, far from the city for days. And then I would come back and I would in it, like I'd be in withdrawal and I'd take my methadone and it'd be like n nothing happened. So it was something I could always fall back on. Now, as someone who doesn't abuse opioids anymore, um, like it's just, it's, it's just a ball and chain that I unfortunately have to take or face going into withdrawal that's worse than what I already experience on a day-to-day -day basis. But um, yeah, uh, since, since the weather's getting colder, um, and, you know, there's massive shifts in temperature, uh, 
my uh, my twitching is getting very very bad um and it is leading me to think i probably do have some sort of motor neuron disease which <clears throat> if that is the case um you know and don't don't be alarmed because i'm not someone who's ever been suicidal outside of the time that uh I, uh, I thought I had Huntington's because they told me I had Huntington's and I was going to be in diapers within a year and I thought, fuck, this is worse than death. My, I'm just going to sit around while my muscles atrophy um, and uh, just wither away in great pain until I die of something like, like pneumonia when my immune system goes into shock. Um, so I believe, you know, if I if I was to get something like MS, which is like like nearly identical to Huntington's, I would want medically assisted suicide. Um, I I I I wouldn't want to be brave and to fight because there's nothing you can do when you have something like that. Um, you are you are at the mercy of a motor neuron disease, it, and I like I've been to. Um, specialized uh, clinics like the Movement uh, Disorder Clinic out in UBC. And um, like they tell me um, that uh, uh, I, 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 I don't seem to have it um, or anything like that because I, and they don't do any real tests. They just like, oh, follow this with your eyes. Oh. Okay, um, uh, here, I'm holding out my hands. You touch my left hand with your right hand. Like, like very elementary fucking stuff. And it's like, they're not taking into account just how shaky I am. And um, it just seems like they want to get me out as quickly as possible. And um, yeah, so if I was to have something like MS, I'd want to know, you know, how much time I had until I, you know, completely lo would lose control of my body, and I would make the most of that time, and then I would want euthanasia, legally, legally, so, because, you know, I don't want to die fucking, um, like, the, the way I, I, I tried to commit suicide before, which was by popping for Xanax and trying to hurl myself off a bridge, um, I don't, I don't want that, I think that's terrible, um, I think, you know, like, there's so, so much that could go wrong, like, I could just end up causing myself more damage, um, I could, you know, have a child find my body and be traumatized for the rest of their lives, like, suicide is just, it's, it's a terrible thing, um, and, uh, you know, I've seen the grief that, um, you know, a traumatic death in the family caused, um, to everyone involved, uh, and in my mom's side of the family, um, and, uh, I see how, you know, despite it being, like, like, I think seven years or something like that since it happened, um, that, uh, this is, you know, still the bane of my aunt and uncle's existence, pretty much, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that to, be inflicted on my family. If I was to die, I would want to be surrounded by my family. I would want to go out, you know, like like my mom, my dad holding my hand or something like that. If it came to that, I'm not saying it will come to that. I'm just saying, you know, what if? But um, I I you know I'm I don't know for sure what's going on because all the diagnoses they give me are so fucking vague. Um, I, uh, I just know that um, my central nervous system is crippled. Um, my auto, uh, uh, or sorry, my immune system is, uh, is suffering from you know, autoimmune disorders. Um, and uh, there's nothing I can really do about it. Um, I mean, uh, uh, ketamine seems to help, but hey, my doctor equates me using ketamine with heroin and he was like i'm not gonna do any more digging until you spend a month without doing ketamine and so you know to fucking humor him i've stopped doing it um and i also you know while i was doing it i would you know break for three or four days because my tolerance a got very high and b i was 
I already had existing cystitis, so bladder-related issues, and ketamine is notoriously hard on the bladder. Um, you know, I, it was not too bad for a while because I hydrated a lot and I drank denatured cranberry juice, which really helps, green tea. Um, but uh, it was bringing my cystitis back, so I would break for three days to a week, and then I would use it again and I would get temporary relief and not even full relief like it would be like 20 percent of the pain was taken away if i took an anesthetic dose like i would be fucking paralyzed and like partially aware of what's going on but i would still feel twitches i would still feel pain i would just get some mild relief um you know, I take a lot of, right now, Phoenix Tears, which is uh, um, a very powerful concoction of THC and CBD. And CBD is a nerve, or CNS, uh, it's a nervous system relaxant, but not a very powerful one. Um, so I don't really get great relief from these symptoms. It just sort of gets me stoned and a little relaxed, so I can focus on being stoned instead of focusing on the pain. But, um, yeah, I mean, in any case, I just want to clear up that the reason I'm twitching is not because of drugs. Like, the only long-lasting psychedelic I've done over the last month has been 2CB once. Um, just, I, I, I just think it's, it's reckless and irresponsible for me to ingest psychedelics. Um, when um, I don't know what state my immune system's in, because I've had responses to psychedelics, like low-dose psychedelics, uh, that felt like 10 times what I was taking because I was sick with the flu or whatever. So, um, you know, I haven't been, I haven't been in taking them. Um, you know, I've taken some ketamine over the last month, um, uh, nowhere near as much as I was taking, um, prior to a month ago, um, but, uh, uh, other than that, just, uh, just cannabis, um, and then stuff I'm prescribed, which is dexedrine, valium, methadone, gabapentin, um, and melatonin for sleep, I mean, that's, 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 that's it, um, but, uh, yeah, I've also, you know, um, I think, uh, because of the Valium Taper and, uh, because, uh, the CNS, uh, and its connection to, um, the hypothalamus in the brain, um, and, uh, and the immune system s makes stress and anxiety, um, uh, immediately translate, uh, to pain in me, and um, I've been experiencing not just that, but stress turning into intense anxiety, like generalized anxiety, and I, I didn't have generalized anxiety until the benzo taper, like I had intense social anxiety, which is why I motor mouth a lot and tangent a lot, because just rapid fire talking keeps me from thinking about the social anxiety, but now I just have a general sort of uneasiness about everything um like i i admittedly i haven't i haven't really ventured too far from the house in a long time um i uh i find that no one really wants to talk to me anymore because they find that you know my 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 pessimistic outlook is miserable and i get it I get it. No one wants to hear these things. Um, I try not to talk about them because of how adversely people r respond to uh, these notions, but I also uh, have become a bit of a pariah as a result, which sort of sucks because, you know, I had multiple different friend groups, but they all seem to have kind of, I don't know, turned their back on me. Um, and uh, it's, it's clear no one at my school wants to talk to me. And I'm not trying to sound like a victim, because I'm not a victim. I'm a fucking, I'm a fucking survivor, goddammit. You know, I'm, uh, I'm, you know, uh, despite 
being a recluse, I'm, I'm very fucking productive. Um, I write a lot. I read a lot. I exercise a lot. I've put on five pounds of muscle over the past few weeks, which sounds like fucking nothing, I know, but, like, literally, I, uh, like, my weight has only increased 10 pounds over the past 10 years, and that is because um, I exercise a lot and build muscle up, but muscle builds very, very slowly for me because of my metabolism. My metabolism is super duper high, and that's why I'm so skinny. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, and I was playing the guitar, <laughs> but I spent my last money on getting it restrung. Boom, within an hour, broke two strings. So now I can't play the guitar. Um, and that was part of what was, uh, what was helping me feel grounded. And now I can't do that, but uh, until I get more money anyways, um, just a couple of days, so I'll survive. And I can go down to the guitar store. It's an excuse to get out and sort of you know, noodle around on their guitars. Uh, but um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, to get that across. Like, um, you know, I don't, I don't need, I don't even like do cocaine anymore. Uh, I mean, not that I like. I'd only do cocaine in party situations, and I haven't been to a party in a long time. Um, I've just been sort of too anxious and uh, too broke. So, and also just so embarrassed by the symptoms I experience that, um, cause I can feel people looking at me and uh, people don't advert their, avert their gaze when I look over at them. They're looking at me like, and I get it, I get it. And I always say, to them, I know I look like a tweaker, but I swear I'm not like, you know, I'm a pretty fucking healthy guy, you know? I gotta, I don't just have a six pack, I got a fucking ten pack, you know? Like, I, uh, I take care of myself. I eat very well, I eat a lot. You know, I have to with my metabolism, or I, uh, I will rapidly lose weight and muscle. I have to exercise at least an hour a day, or I will lose that muscle that I've gained. Um, but, you know, for someone who's 6'3", I only weigh 145. Um, and when I was a, a junkie, you know, and I've been 6'3 since I was about mm, 13, 14, um, I weighed like 120. I looked like a fucking ghost, um, just like, like, like a specter, um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not complaining, um, you know, say la vie, it is what it is, um. Uh, you know, what doesn't kill you makes it stronger, right? Well, I just, uh, I just really, I want to clear that up. Someone left a comment saying, like, you're twitching really hard in the, the, the <laughs> robo-tripping video. Um, but, uh, uh, I, I, I just want you guys to understand why that is. Um, and that it's not, it's not because I'm out doing math or anything like that. Oh, shooting cocaine, you know, like, no, A, even if I wanted to, I can afford that, B, um, I wouldn't want to do that if I could afford it, just, it's bad news, it's just bad news, um, I have no desire to relapse on shit like that, um, I mean, I, I will snort cocaine at parties that's pure, that I know is pure, um, I mean, not, not really anymore, though. I mean, like, if I was, if I was offered, um, cocaine from, you know, a source that I knew, I probably wouldn't do it now. I think that'd probably just make me more anxious. Um, it's just, it's just a fiendish drug. Like, I, I find, I find it just makes me just, all I really feel, because of the ADD, is I don't feel stimulated. I feel a little relaxed. Um, I'm not like everyone else around me who's like manically talking about how they're practically going to conquer the world tomorrow because they feel so good. I feel a little bit relaxed and, uh, I, uh, and then I start to get anxious and sort of fidgety, um, if I do more, um, and I start to get fiendish. I like, I just want to do more and more and more and more. And, uh, it's just, uh, it's just, yeah, I mean... 
the the cons seem to outweigh the pros when it comes to to that stuff i mean yes this what i'm prescribed dexedrin is a stimulant it's not that different from uh methamphetamine just like ritalin is not that different from cocaine um but i'm taking it in you know clinical doses so you know sub recreational doses that being said i am on the ceiling dose so like the highest dose you can be prescribed but i've been on it for so long that it doesn't make me feel anything other than like a little bit more awake after i take it and um it helps me to uh, uh, uh focus a little bit more to in a way that uh how do i how would i explain this like uh let's say um like imagine that uh the sensory input around you is like just all static it's just 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 electrons atoms particles of noise sight um touch Everything in your surrounding that is sensory stimuli just sort of bouncing off of, off of each other. All these particles just zing, 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 zing. Like that's what my ADD feels like when I'm in, say, like a classroom situation. Um, but the dexedrine, basically, what it does is it doesn't eliminate that chaos and you know uh, these metaphorical particles sort of bouncing off each other. It uh, allows me to have this sort of tunnel of focus that is exempt from the chaos of what's going on around me like um you know uh it, without it um i would probably not be capable of uh university or college or really much at all like uh I, when i used to have adhd as a kid i was it was so bad that, um, like, my parents were constantly being called in by teachers being like, you got to put him on a medication or something because he is distracting everyone. He's bouncing off the walls. Like, I was a very different person as a kid. Like, it was weirdly enough when I started, uh, I started smoking that um, uh, the, the hyperactive part of that diagnosis disappeared. But I still have the attention issues i'm uh like i am erratic because of my means of dealing with the social anxiety as i said which is to to <laughs> word salad fucking all the time um tangent here tangent there tangent everywhere but uh i actually as much as some people just loathe it and can't be around it which i get i get um i'm sure it's annoying uh, especially to people who don't have such issues, um, and can't understand them. Um, I, I get that. Um, so, uh, I'm not, I, I have no malice towards those people. Um, you know, I wish they would take a moment to understand and hear me out as to why I'm doing this, you know, or ask so I can tell them. I'm not just going to unsolicited be like, oh, this is an issue I'm going through. This is another issue. This is another issue. This is no, I don't, I, I don't overload on people with, uh, or unload on people with an overload of all the shit that I'm going through. Because again, I don't want to be a victim. Fucking, I want to be a fucking soldier who is going to endure all of this and make it through stronger on the other side um but yeah especially with the twitching like people are really starting to like fucking stare at me and i have to be like yeah you know this is because of my disorders not because i'm fucking method just leave it at that um but uh yeah um i'll leave it at that anyways again just really have to emphasize. I do not see myself as a victim. Um, I do feel um, very betrayed and persecuted um, by, you know, all these people who, you know, uh, I sp spent so much time listening to whenever they had issues 
that were bothering them. Um, just, I would just, you know, I would manage to put a lid on it, hear them out, and be like, can I give you some advice? Okay, here's some advice. All these people. And then every time I talk about something now to them, I'm like, I really, really have to talk about talk to someone because I'm feeling all the stress and stress is gonna mean pain for me. So please just 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 hear me out for two seconds. You don't even have to like if it's over a messenger or if talking to someone like you don't even have to like act actively listen or read what I'm saying, just I just need to say this. And they'll just they'll just ignore me or they'll like uh they'll just be like oh man you you say you never talked about your problems oh well you're sure talking about it now and it's like okay i won't anymore so yeah that's part of why i have this channel um <laughs> because i don't really have anyone to talk to um i get uh, again that makes me sound like a sad sack and a fucking victim but fucking not damn it. i'm just I do feel, though, um, like, I'm unjustly being persecuted for my beliefs. And that may sound absurd to you, but no one likes a cynic. And just people have left in droves from the sphere of my existence and you know, I, I had a lot of friends a month ago, but now since I, uh, I dare, dare to bring some of this stuff up, always with the caveat that this is an opinion, not a fact, um, these are things just to consider, maybe, um, you don't even have to believe them, let's have a discussion about it, because I love I love deep discussions. I love going down crazy rabbit holes talking to people, but no one wants to talk to me anymore, so it is what it is. I'm not going to I'm not going to complain about it any more than that. I just as I said, um it just uh yeah, it hurts because I spent a lot of time, a lot of energy hearing people out really thinking about what they were saying so I could give them advice when solicited, not just fucking belt something out, but give them advice to be like, okay, from my knowledge of whatever you're going through, psychology, so forth, this is what I think is happening. I spent so much of my life doing that that lots of people called me the therapist. <laughs> not that I ever got paid for it, but... um. Yeah, now when I fucking try to do it, boom, you are, or me, I become ostracized and, uh, like, people are just like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't know how to respond to that, sorry, and then I don't hear from them again. It's the way she goes, I guess, um, I've also just, just, yeah, I've had a lot of homies, homies fucking... Oh, you're part of my family. Like, fucking just turn their backs on me overnight, pretty much. And uh, I already had very deep, deeply seated trust issues. And so, um, you know, this all kind of is roped into what is, uh, I believe, conducive to why I'm experiencing these issues. I'm not blaming anyone. I'm not blaming anyone other than the physicians who are not doing their fucking jobs um, and relying on cop-outs to waste the time, the little time I do get with them um, to, to fucking just, just, just keep spinning their, our wheels until our time's up and they say, okay, see you in a month or two. Um, I, but yeah, uh, the, 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 becoming a pariah because of, um, you know, conceding my pre-existing belief system in favor of one that I thought made more sense and was more reliable. It's caused me a great deal of stress, you know, losing friends because you 
choose to believe something that is pragmatic. Uh, it's not like I'm fucking trying to pontificate and get people to believe in God or anything. No, 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 no. I'm just like, hey, I learned this over the last little while. What do you, you don't even have to tell me what you think. It's just, this is what I learned over the last little while. No one wants to fucking hear it. So I don't even talk about it anymore, but people don't want to talk to me anymore. So that stress goes through my brain and it becomes twitches and pain and anxiety. So there you have it. That is why I'm twitching. Please, please believe what I'm saying because I pride myself on being an honest, transparent person. I like I told you, I just told you a lot about like terrible stuff I've done in my past, like hot railing methamphetamine. Uh, I didn't, I didn't even know where it came from. Like, you know, I I, I wouldn't lie about shit like this. So, um, you know, I just want to set the record straight on why this is happening. So, yeah. Anyways, um, wish you all well. Um, and, uh, you are some of the few people who haven't turned your backs on me and, um, who have uh, actually heard me out and I appreciate it immensely because to get these things out in the open is unburdening. It is a weight off of me that is just beyond what I can express in, in terms of gratitude. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. I do appreciate it. And I apologize if my latest content is a bummer, but it just happens to be, you know, events in my life. And this channel is kind of like a vlog. It's a series of video diaries as well as uh, harm reduction tutorials. So there you have it. Um, if you're expecting more psychedelic content soon, um, I do plan on doing some 4-HO DPT and trying to break through uh, um, soon. So uh, hopefully hopefully I'll be in a state where I can do that, um, tell you about it. But uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to be honest. Don't expect a lot of new psychedelic content because my system is just so fucking like crippled right now that uh, I just, I, I'm very reticent to do something that could have unpredictable results. Um, it's not that I'm scared of psychedelics or ego death. I've gotten over that a long time ago. I'm just s like, you know, trying to stick to being a responsible psychonaut, which I think all psychonauts should do. They should have limits that are logical within reason and they should practice safe behavior that's what i'm trying to do so i'm just being honest with you um if you want to tune out i don't blame you i don't blame you because like me a lot of you are suffering on your own um i personally think there's relief in finding solidarity in our suffering but if you find this stuff to be distressing that's the last thing I want. So I don't blame you for, you know, why I for tuning up. So that being said, putting the lid on it, just want to set the record straight. Bye-bye.